I'm Daryl Goodman, Director for Achieve One at Achieve It Solutions. Today we're going to review the EDI control module within the Achieve One suite of applications for SAP Business One on HANA. The purpose of EDI control is to allow easy and efficient electronic exchange of data between trading partners, all from within inside the SAP Business One environment. As we look at our base configuration screens, you can see that we have the ability to define how EDI will connect with SAP Business One, a list of the documents and where the paths will be for both inbound and outbound EDI documents. We can control which fields will be able to be used for EDI, allowing all fields or individual fields to be defined at the header, line, business partner, contact person, ship to and bill to address, item master, uh, levels. Additionally, we can configure options to create notifications, either the executing user or specific person, internal alerts inside of SAP, or email for when there is a failure or pricing variation. This ensures that if there is any deviation between pricing between the document that comes from the trading partner and their defined price list, that the order is able to come in. However, it will be unapproved and waiting for a decision as well as getting a notification. Similarly, on outbound documents, should there be any transmission errors, we have the ability to set up the notifications. For orders that might be coming into your SAP system via a web application, you have the ability to uh, execute any commands that you need for the header and the row level to be able to ensure that the data is updated properly as it comes inside of SAP for EDI. In addition to the traditional mappings that you'd have for your documents inside of EDI, we have the ability for both import and export to be able to control individualized mappings at the trading partner level for specific documents. So for the example, on a purchase order ASN, we have the ability to define the individual tags and document numbers that can allow us to uh, tailor an individual ASN at a per business partner level without having to re-go into any of the mappings inside the EDI program. Again, the purpose of this is to ensure that the EDI processing occurs inside of SAP Business One smoothly. So while this can all occur via a processor so that you have a, a completely hands-free EDI interaction where the communication with the mailbox and the import and export of the documents is fully automated, we do have the ability to control these from within inside of SAP Business One. First, let's look at how simple it is to be able to map a trading partner ID or a trading partner partner to a business code inside of SAP Business One. As you can see, this can be done for the entire partner or at a store ID level if you've set up multiple business partners for individual stores. Similarly, you have the ability to configure and tailor the configuration inside of SAP Business One for the trading partner. As you can see here, we have the ability to determine which documents they're going to use, if we're going to allow BP consolidations, when to send your 855 acknowledgments, any additional flags, or whether or not you want to change the data to be integer quantities to send weights and to be able to include things like the UCC 18 prefix. Again, we had those defaults, but we can override at the individual trading partner level to indicate who would get notified in the event of any kind of inbound or outbound transmission. Additionally, we can override the paths, but we also have the ability to map the EDI values inside of SAP between the store IDs that are coming in or the build to IDs that are coming in from the EDI and the values that you may have created inside of SAP. This ensures that you do not need to set up the data inside SAP Business One exactly the way that trading partners have. So for existing setups or just for your own purposes where you may have a many to one, uh, you have the ability to configure the values that are coming in from the EDI without needing to modify the mapping and point them at the user level the, to the SAP values. And this can be done for bill twos, ship twos, payment terms, shipping types, package codes, unit of measure codes, warehouses, locations, and we also have the ability to put export filters to control which data we'd like to send to the uh, documents. And again, we have the ability to run SQL commands that can modify the data prior to importing or exporting. After you have your configurations, if you were not using the processor, you could, from within inside SAP, go ahead and import your documents. This will review all of the documents that have come in from the mailbox. In this case, it's been picked up. And you could see that this document allows me to see the file that's come in from the transaction processor that did the mailbox pickup. I can review the file or simply select all and import it. When I've done the import, it will warn me here that there is an incorrect pricing. So in this case, you can see here that for each of the items, the EDI price varied from the pricing that was defined inside of SAP. It will import the document, but it will be set to unapproved. It tells me here that the document was successfully created but again, unapproved because of the pricing. You do not need to do this one document at a time. Again, you'd be able to uh, import all the documents that come in from your 
mailbox, even if they're from multiple trading partners. Again, you would then at that point be able to uh, export any acknowledgements that you need to do. If you're working with your ASNs, you'd be able to export your ASNs directly from creating deliveries inside of SAP Business One. And you also are able to export your invoices, your A10s, in order to ensure that you get the invoicing and payment information to your trading partner. Again, here you can see this is the manual mode. You have the ability to have this fully automated based on the processor, but you'll be able to see that you can come in here, filter on particular date range, customers, or all, select the documents that you'd like to export, and press export selected, and this will generate the A10 documents out to your mailbox. As you can see, I've demonstrated the common EDI documents, but we have multiple EDI documents that are available uh, on the sales side, as well even on the purchasing side, and we also have reports available. So we'll be able to come in here and take a look at the EDI reports, so we can look at partner advices, partner messages, or even just a simple logging report. Once again, the idea is that you have easy and efficient electronic data exchange between your trading partners, being able to work inside the SAP Business One user interface, and being able to use all of the existing documents, the sales orders, deliveries, invoices, purchase orders, AR invoices that would you would use inside SAP Business One as you already do without needing to adapt or change your process flow in order to be able to implement multiple trading partners with EDI inside of SAP Business One. This concludes our session on EDI control inside of SAP Business One. If you have any questions about the EDI control module or any other module in the Achieve One suite, please visit our website at www.achieveits.com. Thank you.